So we've looked at an introduction to business intelligence, the process of data mining, and we've also looked at exploratory data analysis. It's about time we got started with some actual data mining techniques. And we start off with a technique that is intuitively quite easy to understand and uh, pretty powerful nevertheless. And that is the technique of association rules or what is also called affinity analysis. At the outset, I'd like to mention that this presentation draws quite a lot from the book Data Mining for Business Intelligence by Shmurli Patel and Bruce, first edition, Wiley 2006. Now, when you go and buy, let's say, a home theater system, you finish buying it, you're about to check out and you're about to walk out of the store, and the sales rep says, don't forget the cables. Similarly, when you buy any electronic equipment, a DVD player, whatever it is, uh, they try to re remind us to buy batteries. Okay, so what are these things? These are obviously companies trying to exploit the potential to make additional sales based on sales that they've already made to us. And this is really the crux of association analysis. That is essentially saying certain things are bought together very often. And if someone doesn't buy those things together, doesn't buy all of the items, then there's some sense to saying did you also consider buying this other item which usually goes with this item so that's the idea of affinity analysis uh, of course one thing we could say is uh, we would typically know that cables go along with uh, home entertainment systems or uh, that batteries go along with electronic equipment and so on and we could al always say that this is an easy thing to do but the whole idea is that there might be patterns which are not so obvious to us. There might be underlying patterns that are not so obvious and might come out after we analyze a lot of data. That's what we're looking for in this whole topic. So for example, let's say we visit uh, the Amazon page of our course, one of our course textbooks. Of course, you see the information about the item itself, but we also see that Amazon uses a recommendation system. It tries to recommend things based on what we are buying. So you're looking at this book, but Amazon is showing us these two, this book is frequently bought along with another book. So they're trying to say that these two items are bought together frequently. So would you consider buying this item? And similarly, another thing also that they do is to say that people who bought this item also bought these other items okay so in addition to the book that you're actually looking at based on historical analysis analysis of historical data of purchases amazon is able to recommend to us additional items that we could also consider buying of course if they recommended random items then it would not be a very effective sell but if they are recommending items that other people seem to be buying then it's quite likely that somebody who's looking at this might be interested in this other item as well. That's the uh, basic idea in recommendation systems or affinity analysis. Okay, So this is also sometimes called market basket analysis, which is to say you're looking at the basket of items that are bought together. You're not looking at just the individual item. You're saying item A was purchased along with that item B and C were also purchased. So now if you analyze several people's purchases of these items, and some of these items seem to be occurring together, then there is some reason for us to think that if somebody buys uh, not all of those items which seem to be happening together, then might be a good idea to recommend the missing items. That's the whole idea. So it's called market basket analysis for obvious reasons. So what we are trying to do is not analyzing the market basket of an individual customer, but you're looking at historical purchases, the market basket of a whole number of customers' purchases. And from that, we are trying to make certain inferences. So as I said, it's called association rules 
market basket analysis, affinity analysis. These are all many different names given to this kind of data mining. So the information that we are able to cull, the patterns about items which are bought together can be used for several things. Till now we have looked only at its use for recommending other items to be purchased. But of course, it also has implications for store layout. For example, uh, items that are frequently purchased together, you might put them together on the store shelves so that somebody who picks up one is also likely to pick up another. But of course, somebody else may argue uh, if these two items are usually purchased together, then the store actually has something to gain by not putting them together. So you put one item in one part of the store, put another item in a distant part of the store. So somebody is forced to walk through the store to find both these items and therefore they might end up buying many more items. It depends. It depends on the viewpoint of how you look at it. Another approach that is also suggested is that, uh, well, you put one of these items and you put the other item which is frequently purchased with this close together but you might have several brands of that item. Put your high margin brand next to the item that is purchased along with it so that people may then end up buying your high margin uh, uh, option. And of course, you'll have other options. The low margin options would be available somewhere else in the store, particularly far away. Okay. So anyway, there are these options. The whole point is affinity analysis can help us to make certain kinds of decisions about store layout, or at least it can influence our decisions about store layout. Cross-selling, we've already looked at this, which is to say, you bought this, why don't you also think of buying that? Another implication, of course, is on catalog design. Which items do you put close together within the catalog for printing purposes? And finally, you can also use this for customer segmentation. That is to say, customers who tend to buy these products together have certain characteristics in common. Uh, and some other customers may be buying another set of products together. They have certain other characteristics in common. So you can identify segments of customers and that could help you in marketing and all kinds of targeted selling. So you've got all of these options and approaches. So let's get down to it. Let's say that we've just got these 10 examples of let's say cell phone faceplates that were purchased. So transaction number one, which is some particular customer, bought three uh, face plates and the colors were red, white, and green. Another transaction by somebody else, they bought two, white and orange, and so on and so forth. So these, when you see on a particular row, certain set of colors shown together, what it's telling you is that in a given transaction, face plates of those colors were all purchased together. Okay, so that's the idea here. So this is an example of, of data that is usually used for association analysis. You can think of each row as representing a basket of items that was purchased together. So that's the idea here. So the central concept in affinity analysis, the concept of a rule. So what you're looking at here is that uh, red and white seem to occur together quite often. So you see that four of these 10 cases have both red and white occurring together. So we could say from this that, well, you know, we could say that if somebody buys red, then it is also likely that they will buy white. That is the affinity between red and white. So this is, you could say, a rule that we can infer from this. This is not the only rule we can infer from this. This is just an example of a rule. So the rule we could infer is to say, if red is purchased, then white is also purchased. Of course, it's not a 100% rule that it's always obeyed, but it looks like a good possibility that of the 10 cases, there are four cases in which this occurs. And so it looks like a priori, a good rule. So this is an example of a rule. If the basket contains this product or this set of products, then it is likely that the other products, some other product or set of products would also be purchased. That's what it is. So just definitely a rule has something called as an antecedent, which is the condition that you're looking for and the consequent, that is what is determined by that condition. So that's just definition, antecedent and consequent of a rule. 